I'm Josh, and today I'm going to show you how to build a custom click, cues, and count in track inside of Ableton Live. We'll also include a little bit of a really basic drum machine in there. I use this on stage with the band that I'm the music director for because we use the click in our ears and we have the count ins also coming through our ears, and that's run by Ableton Live. But then when I'm home, I'm still using Ableton Live to learn new songs, and the same thing comes in handy there. And when I'm teaching lessons, it really comes in handy because it allows me to draw up really basic drum grooves or to add a one, two, three, four to help people who don't already have a sense of that beat like firmly ingrained in their mind, it really helps them hear those things more clearly. Anyways, enough talking, let's get started doing this thing. Right here, I have a brand new Ableton Live set, and I'm gonna hit tab to go over into arrangement view. Not that I really need to right now, I'm just much more comfortable there, because that's where I know how to do everything. Option Command B gives me this browser right here, and you can see I have searched for drum rack, and I'm gonna take this drum rack, and I'm gonna drop it onto a MIDI track, and that gives me this drum rack down here. I'm gonna do Option Command B again to get that browser out of the way. Now, I need to find some things to put in here. First thing we're gonna do is the click track. The click sounds in Ableton are great. I like them a lot. Here, take a listen. Kind of hearing it through my um, lav mic. Maybe it's not that clear. Uh, there's also this sort of sound right here. I dig those, I dig those a lot actually. The only issue about that is I wanna have more control for when it's on, when it's off. I want sometimes to be able to have an eighth note click if we have a slow tempo and I wanna give up a little bit of extra guidance of what the feel is gonna be or if we're going from a straight 4-4 into something that's like a 12-8 feel. I don't wanna be able to play those subdivisions uh, along with the count and give everyone on stage real security about like I know exactly where we're going. We're gonna come in all together and we're gonna sound awesome right from the word go and there's no weirdness in there. In order to do that, what I want to do is find some click sounds to use. And I don't want to just find random click sounds. I want to find the exact Ableton click sounds. So I've got the Finder open. What I did is I went right here to Applications, and I found Ableton Live. I'm going to right-click it, and you can see it says Show Package Contents. When you do that, that opens this right here. It's Contents. You go Contents, App Resources, Core Library, Defaults, Metronomes, Samples, and they have the click and the wood. Uh, the click is that blippity blip one, and you can see they've got a regular one, and they've got the accented one that shows up on beat one. That's another reason why I love having my own click track in there. So instead of having those accents, I can make the click be one continuous uh, sound, one consistent sound. So I'll just grab this, um, this accented blip. I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to drop this right there. I'll grab the non-accented one, drop it right here. I'm going to click on wood. I'm going to grab the accented one, drop it there, and the unaccented one right here. Now, these are kind of confusing because they're all named metronome right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it. I'm going to do Command R. That opens up the renaming here. And this one, I'm going to do blip. And then this one, I'll also name blip, but I'll do it lowercase. So I know that's the unaccented one. Un unaccented one. Same sort of thing here. This will be wood, and this will be lowercase wood, and you can hear, this is the sound that I want to hear is my metronome, not so much this. This I really like when I'm playing by myself and it's quiet, but on stage, it's just too risky to have something that's that subtle. Now what we need to do is, let's put a, let's do a little drum kit here. Here in my Dropbox, I have this Yurt Rock Artist Pack, which was, I think I spent like $100 on it, and um, it's just so full of amazing samples and grooves and different things that I find all sorts of uses for. I just pulled up this one ahead of time. This is Mike Clark, some one-shots, stick one-shots, and I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna find, uh, let's see, kick. Nope, just the kick is what I'm looking for. There it is. Great, I'm gonna grab this one. I'm gonna put this kick right here. I'm gonna grab, is this hat good? Sure, that's great. And we're gonna need some hi-hat. That'll work. Drop it right on there. Do we want anything else? Do we want like the open hi-hat sound? Eh, that's kind of obnoxious. Let's skip it. Okay, so now I've got a kick snare hat in here. And now I can make my own little drum beats that are in there. And next up, I want to get the one, two, three, four. I probably need one through six to get in there. If you've ever tried doing this, it's very humbling to record yourself because you get really self-conscious and you're listening back to your voice and you're thinking, wow, this isn't as clear. It's not as tight as I want it to be. And now by the time I found 
uh, a good take of each of these things. There was variance in the pitch, and then you're trying to pitch correct, and it's just like, oh, what a pain. Uh, I've done some things where I've tried to use like this voice intro verse chorus pre-chorus bridge these, like, these ai voices um and it wasn't that great uh luckily for lazy people like us there's all these free res free resources online like this one that i found from motion worship i'm going to put a link for this url down in the description so you can grab their uh, guide cues it is very comprehensive you can see they've got song form things so you can say things like um pre-chorus you know or pre-chorus with post-chorus three you know you've got the actual which chorus or which verse we're in same thing we've got the counts so you can hear four and we've got other things too like if you want to just say drums two three four so i will give the link for that i just downloaded this thing and i'm going to use the counts in here they've got them both slow and fast i'm going to grab all the fast ones because i think I don't have to have them sound elegant. I just need them to be really, really clear. And I will do, um, let's see, one fast, two fast, three fast. Four fast. Probably don't need five, six, seven, and eight. Well, we definitely need five and six because we've got a couple songs that are in six and I guess it's the eight we don't need. Seven, I guess, you know, maybe we're gonna learn a Rush song and we wanna make sure we can get all that seven, four stuff in there. Cool, and I've dropped all of these in here. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna go into here and I am gonna take this and I'm just gonna create some time, shift, command, M, opens this up and you can see I've got my click in here. Actually, let's do, there you go. Oh, and you can't hear that because that's not on. I'm gonna use Command D to duplicate those things. And I could have this in here with... Uh, one. Oh, I should reorder those, that's dumb. Two, one, two, three, four. That's not bad. Oops, I did these in the wrong three, spot. Three, one, one. Four. Cool. One, two, one, two, three, four. Or let's say I didn't quite want that. Let's take this thing. I'm going to just do Command D. Now I've duplicated the track, but instead of having all of this stuff in here, I'm going to make a little drum beat in here. So we've got, let's see. Cool. So I've got my own little drum machine. I've got uh, cues and count ins. I've got a click track that I can turn on and off, or I can make certain parts of it loud or accented, or I can um, establish a groove that's not just the quarter notes uh, just by painting in with MIDI stuff. This comes in really handy to me. I'm going to take everything that I made right here. I'm going to save it into a file. Actually, before I go, let me show you this. I'm going to do Shift Command S. That opens up the Save As command. What I'll do here is I'm in. Ableton and I'm going to go down to user library and I'm going to save it in here and I'm going to call this click count cues drums v1 or whatever and now I'm going to open the browser so option command b and I'm going to find that one that I just made so let me clear out this drum rack and let's see what did we call that click count cues drums v1 right here i'll take this what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click it and i will add it to favorites and now anytime i want to use a drum machine or a count in or a click track i can just click on favorites and you can see here's click count cues v1 right here i can drag this thing because this is the great thing about ableton i can take one ableton live set and i can pull it into another ableton live set and drop it right there and then everything that we just built now exists right there. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. That's hilarious. Here's this other one that we just made. You can see that I've got those in there. Get that browser out of the way. So 
That's how to do it. Again, I will save this into a Dropbox folder and you can have at it and use it. Or you can follow that link that I'll also put in the description and you can make your own. Hope this is helpful. Later.